kinetic chain and its potential role in overhead athlete's shoulder. So the athletes involving in tennis, badminton, volleyball, baseball, they are considered as overhead athletes. Look at the uh, biomechanics of a tennis serve. It has uh, basically three phases. One is the preparatory phase that is the beginning of uh, the initial movement till the shoulder reaches maximum external rotation. That's where uh, the racket head is uh, closer towards the ground. So this is the preparatory phase till the athlete reaches maximum shoulder external rotation. So from this point till the ball contact, it is the acceleration phase. That is from maximum external rotation to the ball contact is acceleration phase. Following ball contact, it is the follow through phase. So preparation phase, it is from the first sign of movement till the athlete reaches maximum external rotation of the shoulder. Whereas the acceleration is phase is it is from the maximum external rotation of the shoulder till the uh, end of ball contact and follow through phase is immediately after contact and it continues through the end of the serve. So even in badminton smash, you will find such similar phases like preparatory phase, acceleration phase and follow through phase. So if you observe keenly, the maximum force production for this serve, for these type of forward activities, it not only comes from the shoulder, it comes from the entire kinetic chain. The end. Among these, shoulder produces only 13% of the kinetic energy during badminton smash. So the remaining 87% is come from the different segments of the body other than the shoulder. Whilst the interaction between the different segments of the uh, human system in order to produce that particular type of movement and all these sport come under rotation related sport where rotation of the trunk is an important component. This rotation of the trunk is measured with the help of an angle which is formed between the pelvis and the shoulders. So if it is amount of trunk rotation is so important in order to transfer the force which are generated from the ground to the through the trunk to the implement in overhead activities. So the x-factor angle, if you see in the first picture, the x-factor angle is quite low. That means the trunk rotation is quite low. So the ability of the person in order to exert maximum force with the help of trunk rotation will be lesser when you compare with the second picture where the x-factor, that is the angle of separation between the pelvis and the shoulder is quite large so that he can recoil with a greater force so that he can transfer that energy efficiently rather than creating with the less x factor angle if you see uh, the badminton smash look at the x factor angle is maximum especially in between the preparatory phase and the acceleration phase this is the comparison between uh, our elite group of athletes badminton smash as well as the novice group of athletes if you see you can observe excessive excessive x factor during the acceleration acceleration phase uh, so which signifies that there is an excessive trunk rotation which is present in the elite group of athletes during badminton smash whereas in this there is a less x factor that means the trunk rotation is quite less so the novice group were not able to efficiently transfer energy happens how these energy gets transferred for example if you take a propeller if you want the propeller to fly it is better to give a force you have to give a force at this point rather than producing force at this area it is impossible to make the propeller fly by creating a force here so what exactly happens is by creating a force here where this is the momentum from the center of rotation which is one eighth of an inch and this is the momentum of the propeller wing which is four inches so the force gets multiplied by that momentum so here the force whatever force you are giving here it gets multiplied by almost 32 times happens exactly in the same way in, term, in terms of uh, any overhead activities. For example, if it is a golf swing, the momentum is almost 75 inch here, whereas the momentum, hip momentum is three inch. When force is exerted from the hip because of the rotation here, where the momentum is almost three inches and this is so it it gets al almost multiplied by 25 times so the efficiency of the rotatory force will be maximum which is delivered to the golf swing when you create a momentum from the hip rather than just from the uh, shoulders so this is what is a kinetic chain where there is a different sequences and separated movements along the with a good range of motion and stability will create a good energy transfer from the distal segment to proximal segment which makes the uh, 
over at activity efficient. For example, when you throw or when you do a pitching movement, the first movement you deliver a force in the ground and, the, in, and in turn ground exerts a force on you. So the lower limb moves first, followed by the hip, followed by the trunk and then to the shoulders and finally to the implement. So this sequence of movement which occurs from the distal to proximal segments makes the energy transfer efficiently from the distal to the proximal segments thereby assisting shoulder to exert a good movement on the implement during overhead activities. There should be a good separation between these segments so that energy transfers from one segment to the other segment. Uh, it should not occur simultaneously. So sequence and separation along with the good range of motion and and good stability will end up in a good kinetic chain efficiency so that the efficiency of the overhead movement will be maximum. So basically first the hip pivot followed by the collar pivot and the shoulder pivot occurs in a sequence. So kinetic chain is the sequential task specific activation of the body segments during which functional movement patterns occur. So efficient kinetic chain is the ability to generate and submit and permit efficient mechanical energy transfer through the whole kinetic chain that contributes to efficient overhead functioning. Whereas inefficient kinetic chain, if there is any insufficiency uh, such as a decreased range of motion or decreased stability because of the muscle weakness, that can detrimentally affect the force transfer to the adjacent segments. So which eventually leads to the compensation of from the other uh, segments uh, in order to accommodate the energy loss, which induce micro trauma to the segment which is compensating, uh, leading to injuries. The studies which says that leg and trunk generate almost 50% of the total kinetic energy required for the surf. There is a compensation whenever there is a leak, energy leak in some segments distally. So the shoulder tries to compensate and it tries to activate uh, excessive muscular uh, force and then leading to uh, repetitive trauma and leading to or micro trauma and injuries. Uh, whereas in baseball pitch, the stability, especially the lumbar pelvic hip stability as well as the gluteus medius activation is important for an efficient pitching. In case of overhead throwing athletes, reduced hip abduction strength and hip range of motion have been associated with increased risk of shoulder and elbow injuries in throwing athletes. Lower limb injuries also appear to have an increased risk of upper limb injuries, showing that the significance of the distal segments in terms of uh, efficient functioning of the proximal segment is very significant. So inefficient kinetic chain is considered as a predisposing factor that increases the risk of shoulder injury and pain in overhead athletes. Uh, studies have shown that humeral torsion that is especially the retroversion of the humerus or insufficient external rotation or flexion deficit or total range of motion deficit or glenohumeral internal rotation deficit or excessive workload or most of the risk factors which are for uh, shoulder injuries. But the study shows that there is a limited evidence to all these uh, studies. Uh, limited evidence is evidence provided by one or by one study of acceptable quality and one or more studies of Portland quality. Uh, so even though there is not a strong evidence that that these risk factors may contribute to the uh, shoulder injuries in overhead sport, studies have suggested a limited evidence. So further studies are definitely required in order to uh, exactly find out the risk factors of uh, shoulder injuries in overhead athletes. How does this kinetic chain works? So basically there should be a continuum between the soft tissues so that the force can be efficiently transferred from one segment, especially from the distal segment to the proximal segment. So if you see the myofascial continuum, so these are the adductors as a orientation in this way. So these are the external oblique, which has a orientation in this way. So this orientation of the external oblique as well as the orientation of the adductors are in line with each other. That means the contralateral oblique external oblique and the adductors are in same line so their activation pattern can occur simultaneously for his internal oblique the orientation of the fibers is opposite to that of the adductors so this can activate along with the external oblique of the other side so this is the external oblique of the right side this is the internal oblique of the left side and their orientation is this way and this will be the adductor orientation. 
So the adductors of one side, for example, in this side, adductors of the left side, internal oblique of the left side and the external oblique of the right side forms a continuum which spirals around the body and forms a spiral myofascial sequences. It stretches and then it produces elastic recoiling during a trunk or during a rotation related sporting movement. And this external oblique is in continuum with the uh, serratus anterior forming a serrato external oblique complex. Doesn't stop there. So this is the serratus anterior which is in line with the rhomboids formulas with the opposite side of splenius. So this is so it is the splenio rhombo serrato external oblique internal oblique and adductors forms a spiral sequence which is important in uh, which may be important in rotation related sport. So this is the splenio rhombo serrato and oblique adductor complex which forms a spinal which forms a spiral myofascial sequence. Also functionally if you speak there is a posterior oblique chain and anterior oblique chain. Anterior oblique chain as we have seen before posterior oblique chain there is a continuum between the glutes max and the opposite side latissimus dorsi. So